The Raspberry Pi Zero, one of the most compact single board computers in the world, making some of the coolest retro gaming projects that you've seen, all sorts of capabilities, all sorts of potential, and what? It's only $5? Are you sure about that? The Raspberry Pi Zero, a $5 computer. People love them because they're compact. You can make cool projects like this pie card over here, taking a classic NES cartridge, stuffing it with this little compact computer and having a retro gaming machine, or on the go, stuffing this Pi Zero into a classic Game Boy to create the ultimate emulation machine, playing games from Atari 2600 all the way up to Sega Genesis, Super Nintendo, and a select amount of arcade games. This is so cool. A single board computer, everything you need on one chip, the memory, the GPU, the processor, the hard drive, everything is on here. Now, $5 is a little misleading. These are extremely hard to find for $5. The only time I've heard of getting these for $5 without a shipping cost or some sort of additional fee was at Micro Center. Micro Center and Fry's Electronics offered these for $5 each, but if you buy two, the price goes up to $10 each. So it's actually a promotion, something called a lost leader, to get you in the store, you buy the Raspberry Pi, but then you might be buy add-on sensors and the power supply and everything else. So while they might not be making any money on the Pi Zero, they'll be making money on other additional items. Now you might be wondering, what's the difference between the Pi Zero and the Raspberry Pi 3? The Raspberry Pi 3 is a much more common, much more popular chip because it packs a way bigger punch. The Raspberry Pi 3, though, is $35. Now, back on the $5 price tag, the Pi Zero is not actually $5. You have to be incredibly lucky to get it for $5. And I'm going to show you where you can get it right now and how much it'll actually cost. And the short answer is somewhere around $13 to $14 for the chip itself. And let me tell you, you do need more than just the chip. Looking at the specs, you can see the Raspberry Pi Zero is only up to one gigahertz. It has a not so good GPU opposed to the Raspberry Pi 3, and it only has 512 megabytes of onboard RAM. Moving on to the, the Raspberry Pi 3 has four times the USB ports, double the RAM at one gigabyte, a four core 1.2 gigahertz processor, a built-in LAN, and many, many other advantages. So as you can see, you can see websites like this that show Amazon $35, Amazon $5. When you click the $5, it's not an actual Pi Zero. It's a Raspberry Pi cookbook. What the hell, Slant? What the hell? So there is a difference between the Pi Zero 1.3 and the Pi Zero W. The Pi Zero W was recently updated and puts a built-in Wi-Fi on the actual single board computer, thus giving you less slots you have to fill. Otherwise, you would have to get a USB adapter to get on the Wi-Fi with your Raspberry Pi. If you need no Wi-Fi, this is not a big deal, but if you're using it for retro games or something like that, I highly recommend you spend a couple extra dollars and you get the Zero, because you can't even get a USB adapter for under that amount of cost. The cheapest Raspberry Pi Zeros I, I found online where you can get them shipped to your door, a Raspberry Pi Zero is going to cost you something in the high $16 range with free shipping, and the regular one is going to cost you right around the $13 point. So it is an extra $4 to get the W, but it might be worth it. You can get the W for that $5 at Micro Center if it is still on sale. Jumping onto Amazon because you get free two-day shipping, it's very convenient. You will see the Raspberry Pi as cheap as $19.97. This might go on sale, but this is actually about right, but I would pay the extra three cents and get the W. But you're seeing it's $20 instead of the $16 or $17 on eBay. I think the extra $3 though to get free two-day shipping and a better return policy is definitely worth the extra dollars. I would not mess with that. The Pi Zero does not come with standard USB. It's a micro USB. So you will need like a micro USB to USB adapter. You might want a heat sink. You will definitely need a power supply and other things, thus making the $33 can of kit a good get you started kit. If you have some of the adapters, you can save the $8 right here and get the $25 kit. If you really want to save some money, buy the adapters yourself. And then with the uh, power cord, actually going to a local thrift store, you'll find them for like $1, $2 for a micro USB. You want a 5 volt, 2.5 or 3 amp cable. 
and you can often find those. I've found them before at thrift stores for just a couple dollars. With all that said though, you're still looking at somewhere between 20 and $35 to get you up and running retro gaming consoles. The Pi Zero will run all of these systems, Nintendo, Game Gear, Sega Genesis, Mega Drive, Atari Lynx, Atari 2600, Atari 5200, Game Boy, Game Boy Color. But when you start getting into Game Boy Advanced, you start getting into the 32-bit like Sega 32X, N64, forget about it. You will have some lag, things like that. With that said though, it could still do a lot and pack a punch for those inexpensive retro gamers. And as I mentioned, the portable gaming potential for it is fantastic. The game, the built-in Game Boy Pie Boys, people do it with Game Boy Advanced. There's a lot of shells out there that fit a Raspberry Pi Zero in it perfectly. So there you have it, the Raspberry Pi Zero, inexpensive retro gaming, inexpensive DIY projects. There's a lot of development on here. It's a cheap board, and because it's widely available and it's so cheap, there's a lot of development. That's something I haven't mentioned yet, which is why it's so popular. You've heard the name before. The reason you've heard it is it's one of the most popular single board computers in the world. It's the third, Raspberry Pi as a category is the third most popular selling computer next to the PC and the Mac. Thus, it has some such an ecosystem of apps and software and all sorts of other retro gaming and projects, uh, Bitcoin mining, you name it. People are working on projects, home automation. People have projects for these boards. It's a great fun tinkering tool, makes a great Christmas present. I hope this sheds some light on the Raspberry Pi debacle. Another question I get a lot is how come uh, with Retro Pi, how come I can't use a Raspberry Pi 3 image on a Raspberry Pi 0? The reason being is it is a different microprocessor and Raspbian actually has different optimization and a slightly different code for the Raspberry Pi 3 and the Raspberry Pi 0. Now typically you can take a Raspberry Pi 0 image and run it on a Raspberry Pi 3, but you can't take an image that you've already ran on your Raspberry Pi 3 and bring it down to a Raspberry Pi 0. That's the general rule of thumb and that's just how it is right now. So if you are getting software, make sure you're getting it for the right board. I hope this video was helpful to you. Don't forget to leave a like, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and we'll catch you on the next one. What the are you thinking, new egg?